In this video, my son and I are cutting two large beech trees to make some long beams for a building project. Both trees are, are pretty straight upright uh, and fairly large and have a, a good long bowl to them. They both have some branches that are overhanging more on one side than another so they definitely want to fall in a particular direction. Neither one of them looks like it uh, has so much tension on it that it's going to want to uh, go over really easily. They'll, they both just look like uh, they want to go where we kind of want them to go anyway. It turns out that that is not the case, uh, as we'll see with this, the first one that I show here. This tree is going to barber chair, as you will see in a little bit. A barber chair is a situation where the tree splits vertically up the trunk and can go up a, a fair way, and it's a very dangerous situation. It, it kicks back, and as the tree comes up the top, it can actually come off the top of the barber chair and it's going to be 10, 15, 20 feet up in the air and then fall down. And if you're underneath it, uh, you're in trouble. In this case, the tree does not fall off the top of the barber chair. The whole thing collapses at the hinge, uh, which is, is good. Beech is a species that splits pretty easily, which makes it great for firewood. It's uh, easy to split up uh, into smaller chunks, but it also makes it a little bit more dangerous to cut. My son is cutting the wedge out, and uh, he will correct uh, any errors in the wedge to make sure that this is going to fall in the direction that we want it to. You want the two cuts that make up the wedge to meet at a clean angle in the back of the wedge. You don't want a cut that goes beyond that angle uh, creating what they call a Dutch mat and that Dutchman will close up as the tree starts to come over and act as a fulcrum and break the hinge. He takes his time you know, cutting that uh, whole wedge out and making sure that it's good and clean. That's one of the most important steps in falling the tree. Here is another view of the finished wedge. So you can see that it is uh, you know, nice and clean and everything looks good on it. This is the mistake. The trunk of the tree is very straight up, but uh, some of the upper limbs 
are overhanging to one side in the direction of the fall uh, and they're overhanging enough that's going to put tension on this tree and that's going to cause us some trouble. When he was cutting the notch, it looked like he was cutting it pretty high. But you'll see because of that this is on a hillside, that that is not really the case. He's got to clear stuff off of the ground in order to be able to do the back cut. He sets up a, a little cut coming back from the wedge uh, to get a a good indicator as far as where he needs to start at the back of the tree with the back cut coming towards the wedge so he hits it correctly. He's done everything correctly here. It's just sometimes the nature of the beast. If this had been a maple or a cherry, it probably would not have barber chaired. Just a slight miscalculation and a, a little bit uh, of extra tension on the tree and uh, you can get results that you aren't expecting. She's going, she's going. That's why you do a plunge. Yep. I didn't think she was quite that heavy. This is the tree he cut down actually just before the one uh, you saw. It is also a beech. It is basically the same situation. Its trunk is pretty straight up in the air, uh, but it does have some branching and stuff that uh, wants to take it in the direction that we are going to fall it. The main difference here is we just had decided to do a plunge cut. At this point, he is cutting the notch, and then he will clean it up again to make sure that there are no Dutchmen in it. In this case, he did a Humboldt notch. Because of the hillside and the lay of the tree, there was enough room uh, with this cut that was high enough above the ground that he could do a humble easily. 
uh, prefer to use the Humboldt if possible, but uh, most of the time if you're felling trees uh, and for the lumber, you want to cut as close to the ground as you can. But in this situation, uh, the, this side of the tree was high enough he could do the Humboldt notch. Here he is starting the plunge cut and he will basically put the bar of the saw straight into the tree. If the tree is large enough we try to do this well back away from the hinge and then work towards the hinge, towards the notch to create the exact size hinge that we want. He has a 24 inch bar on this saw, but the tree is big enough at this point uh, that he cannot get all the way through the tree at its widest point. So you'll see that he actually works towards the back of the tree where he's going to leave some holding wood, but uh, by working back towards that, he will get to the point where the tip of the bar actually comes out of the tree on the back side. That way he can pick the cut up from the other side and, and work towards the hinge before he ever releases it. So he's come back towards the hinge now and is uh, getting it to the way he wants it on this side and then he'll go around to the other side and do the same thing. The holding wood gives you plenty of time to uh, put this cut just the way that you want it. Uh, it is the safest way to do these. And you can see that the tip of the bar does not come through when he's in the thickest part of the tree. He puts a couple of wedges in just as a safety factor so the tree can't sit back uh, as he releases the, the tree, the holding wood. Um, not really necessary in this case because the tree wants to fall over in the direction of the cut anyway, but it's just uh, common practice that we do. You'll see when he cuts the holding wood, there is enough tension in this tree trying to pull it in the direction that we want it to go that it actually pulls some of the wood out of the tree. It doesn't even get it all the way cut. So there was enough tension in this tree that it may have barber chaired uh, if he had not done the plunge cut. Hard to say.